Today at shopdap.com, we're gonna be installing a Club Sport muffler on a Mark 8 GTI. Oh my God, that sounds so good. There are many European models that we don't get in the US that we drool over. One of them is the Club Sport GTI. The first Club Sport GTI was introduced in 2016 and had it upgraded everything. They had the same engine as the Golf R and the Club Sport S model set the record for the fastest front wheel drive car around the Nürburgring. For the Mark 8 GTI, it's not much different. The Club Sport GTI gets better brakes, a better engine, a better suspension, and even an upgraded exterior. While we can't get a Club Sport model in the US, we can take European parts, import them, install them on our car, and make a Club Sport-esque type US model car. So if you're looking for parts for your VW or Audi, head over to shopdap.com where you can find all the parts you need for your car. And purchasing a Club Sport muffler like this one or any others helps support videos just like this one. That's it. We don't have DSG. Oh yeah, sorry. I take a long time between shifts. How do you know that this is even gonna sound like different at all? Well, I actually don't. I don't know. The Club Sport's supposed to be a performance model. The Mark 7 cars, the TCR, and the Club Sport models sounded very different. So I expect this one's also gonna be more aggressive. It also has much larger tips, which we're about to show you right now. I have very large tips. Factory tips, Club Sport tips. This is you, and this is the guy she says not to worry about. Our factory tip's about three and three quarter inches. The Club Sport tip, five inches across, it's an oval shape. It's also slant cut, whereas these are flat. And this, this is about four and a half inches or so uh, in the, the shorter way. Vertical. And the, the, the first <laughs> vertical horizontal. The balance is the other thing we're gonna worry about. So I think this tip would fit in here, but be very close to rubbing. So we're gonna test it with this balance on the car. The other alternative is that you would have to swap it to the actual Club Sport Valance. The best thing to do is instead of cleaning your exhaust tips, you just put new ones and just put a new exhaust on. Yeah. So I've made a beautiful setup here to allow you to display to compare stock one, Club Sport one. Stock one, Club Sport one. It would look silly because you would have these minuscule little baby tips inside of this much larger hole. You familiar with the phrase hot dog down a hallway? be like that. Now, one thing that the Club Sport rear balance doesn't have is this gapingly huge hole in it. You can see real deep in there. There is on that side and on this side over there. What, pray tell, do you think that hole is for? That you could stick your whole arm in like this. I'm all the way over here at this rear, rear reflector. This hole right here is probably for a tow hitch. But in the United States of America, we don't get tow hitches because they don't trust us because even though they know they'll put a tow rating of 1,100 pounds and you say, I'll just put bikes on it and a jet ski maybe one time, they know you're going to try to put a 32-foot mini yacht on there and you'll use it for demoing your grandmother's basement. And the beautiful part about this is it's fairly easy to install. Now, I'm working on a lift. You probably don't have a lift, so you're gonna be working on the ground, and I'm gonna be standing up, and you're gonna be laying down. But this is a clamp. All we do is cut off the factory exhaust, slide this clamp on there, clamp it down, voila, you've installed a new rear muffler, except for you haven't yet. So we're gonna show you how to do the rest of that. Okay, so if you were working on the ground, I would suggest using a floor jack for this. It would be probably the best bet. What I'm gonna do is line up these exhaust hangers with their rough idea of location. So this one needs to go back a little bit further. The other one now has probably moved on me. And now we've got our pipe lined up. So our idea here is to cut it right in this general vicinity. Now, you wanna give yourself a little bit room because you aren't gonna go butt right up against your exhaust pipe. So you wanna maybe cut back just a touch off of there. I'm gonna be using a Sawzall. You can use either a Sawzall or you can use an exhaust pipe cutter, which is a chain that you rock back and forth to get through the pipe. This is the easiest because we have space and it's power, powered. All right, so this is where we had our exhaust stuff kind of lined up here. If you look, 
this exhaust pipe here, this is a factory one, has these dimples on it. One, two, three, four, five, six. Now, if you look at the new one, you can see there's one, two here, and there's one, two there. So clearly either the tooling or these are intentional marks has that lining up exactly there. So that means these two dimples are right here. So we can just cut right, roughly to the, to the right of them to give us what we need. Just like that. All right, so we're gonna be removing this exhaust hanger here. It's just a 13 millimeter. Now, this hanger you can remove with a special tool, but we're gonna do it off the car so it's easier to see and do. And the same thing goes for this side. Just 13s. Now we're gonna take this down. When they do the, the fluoride at the end, when they do the Get a little luby. Luba doob doob, that'll help it come off. We are going to be using these exhaust pliers. You don't need these to get these things off, but trying to pry these off is very challenging. So, uh, or can be, depending on what you're dealing with. You can find these exhaust pliers on shopdop.com. We'll link to them in the description below where you can purchase a set just like this. I'm gonna stop working on top of a transmission uh, jack because this makes this very unstable and likely to fall on the ground. Okay, so I threw it on the ground. These are wider than they normally are, <laughs> which, which is why I'm struggling so bad. Just like that. Getting them on is way easier than getting them off. That might have actually done more than I realized. That whole working it around with this pick. That's the trick. That's the trick. So you w work it off with a pick, also found at shopdap.com. Then you can use your pliers to slide the rest way off. As you can see, the tip of this is significantly larger than the hole, which is why it bites on pretty hard from this barb. Now we're gonna go back on with our uh, hangers. These should go back on a heck of a lot easier than they came off. Plenty of lube left over from your coming off that the going on goes much easier. There we go. Let's show you at home what this looks like with the stock valance. I'm betting it's not gonna fit. We expect it to be all kinds of touching in all these areas right here. Well, that's a problem. So as you can see, this tip is firmly placed within the hole, I guess you could say. No, I wouldn't say firmly. It's very much touching this area here and it is not even close to getting inside there. So it's safe to assume this isn't gonna work. So hypothetically, I think if you were trying to use your factory balance, you could probably cut like this section right here and then cut all the way up and around. And I think you might get enough clearance between both these. Now, more importantly, if you do that, I suspect there's a very good chance you're gonna melt your balance in this general vicinity all <laughs> around here and this section right here. So you should use the right part. All right, we're gonna start with these two little baby torque screws inside. Oh, that's a terrible noise. Inside these clips. The two little baby torque screws, and then we should be able to just pop it down like that. This car is brand new. It's still getting stuff all over me. All right, so we're looking here at the rear valance and we're gonna show you the clips that we're dealing with. If you look, this is the bumper cover right here, the green part, and that's the tab where you release the rear valance. You can see you kind of push down and it'll allow it to pull forward. You have to kind of pull the valance while you're doing those. So it looks like we can access almost all of them along here, the top. The some, one place here right above this, you can see this is the rebar, this is your impact where if you've got in a car accident, this is what protects you and it collapses. There's some up above that, which I think we might be able to get to with a pick. So we should be good to take this out with the bumper on the car, which is what I was hoping for. And if you're on jack stands, you'll probably just have more dirt in your face than I have. Uh, Cause your car is probably not brand new like this one. I'm still getting dirt on me. I'm taking out this torque screw. You probably can do this without this, but I'm doing this just so that we can give you a little more visibility for the screw, the clips we're releasing. We're starting with this clip right here. 
there's a tab we push down. So I'm gonna be pushing down on the tab with the screwdriver and I'm gonna be pulling the valance out to get it to release from the bumper cover itself. Even though you can't see, but you gotta deal because I can't work if you can see. So you can see right there, got that one released. Right here is another tab. Now I'm gonna stick a screwdriver. It's got a, a, a barb on the opposite side. I'm having a hard time seeing because I'm trying to work blind so that you guys can see at home. I have to push this tab on the opposite side of it to get it to release from the bumper cover itself. And I think I just got it. And there's another one of those right here. I'm not gonna try to show you releasing that one because I can't work like that. I just pulled this and you see this was kind of a barb that was sitting inside here. So this needs to be released as well. That's the hard part. That is the hardest part of this. The rest we're gonna walk around and, and kind of put tension on it. So it should just slide out once we put tension on there. Now there's a tab right here that you can't really see, but I did release it by reaching my hand around the backside here and can pop it out just like that. So we're just gonna release and pull, release and pull, release, pull. Again, we're getting to the hard part. So we're gonna do this back edge over here. We're, we're about to be off. Here we go. Piece of cake. Toe hitch. The clips we're looking at, that was the original one you released the first. Then as you go along, you have these side ones. Those are a little bit weirder. Then as you go, these ones get easier. Let's make sure that's one thing whenever you're dealing with aftermarket stuff. Now this is a factory part, but whenever you're dealing with aftermarket stuff, you should always double check before you're installing stuff like this. If this was a non-factory part, I would be much more worried about if the clips are all in the same place, if everything's gonna line up in the right place, if all the stuff's gonna be correct. Now this one is a factory part. As long as the bumpers are the same, which they are, none of this should matter at all. It's always good to check. So we're gonna go back on. Should be pretty simple to do so. Say. Oh. <laughs> what was that? Okay. So aside from being aesthetically much more attractive, uh, this one will actually fit our exhaust tips. And uh, yeah, so that's where we're at. I'm gonna start by going from the side because the starting in the center was a dumb idea and I never should have done it. So. You can do, you can see there's a notch cut out for it. So this tab goes in that hole. Nathan's helping me support that side, but what you gotta make sure is that your clips are kind of rotating up and in. Cause you do kind of just bang it in place, which is pretty easy, but you gotta make sure that all your tabs are in the right place. Cause if you just start smashing away like the Hulk, you're gonna, Hulk yourself into another rear balance. <laughs> and maybe maybe a rear bumper if you mess up that too. This car kind of has the color of the Hulk. This is a kind of a Hulk color. Should we should we um, make a replica of the Hulk car from Fast and the Furious out of it? <laughs> it is the worst movie car, I think, nearly on the planet. <laughs> that Hulk car, it is hideous. It's yeah. the only front wheel drive car in a movie called Tokyo yeah. Drift. So all of these clips, if you look over here, kind of look like they're in, but I can almost guarantee you that if I just pulled this, I can pull all of them out right now. So you have to make sure that not only do you get them in like this, but then you secure and make sure they're latched all the way. You hear that? You hear that audible click? That means I was in there. You can see all of these are properly in. And as you get here, you see it's pretty obvious, like eh, that one's clearly not in all the way. So this one, as you can see, if you get a close up here, mm -hmm. it was the plastic was kind of stuck on the edge. So it's kind of marred a little bit while I was getting it seated properly, but it finally kind of sat down where it was supposed to. Cool. What you're doing is just walk past. So push on the bumper side, then push on the valance side. Push on the bumper side, push on the valance side. So. This is what it should look like when you're done. Now we're gonna reinstall this hardware. All right, we're about to put this muffler up. I'm gonna slide this clamp on. I'm doing this with the nuts facing the back side of the car and down so we can put them on the car. And now we're gonna jack our muffler up. Hey, look at that. It fits in the balance. So 13 millimeter over here, 
And the last one. Now you're gonna get your clampity clamp kind of lined up like that. I'm gonna get the stuff hung over there first before we tighten this. But I just wanted to make sure it was like, okay. One note I wanted to make as I cut further away from this to, to give it more of a gap, I actually could have cut closer to the line because the gap is probably a little bit uh, wider than I would have ideally wanted. It should seal fine, should be fine, but I would like it to be probably a little bit closer than it's gonna be. These have our, our, they're kind of slotted. So you have a little more freedom to move. So you can have some uh, like left to right adjustment within this if you want. That is where she sits. And what you want to do is kind of walk these back and forth when you tighten them to get you proper tightness. See how, see that, see how strong and powerful that is? I wiggle it and, uh, and they feel like two are one. So good. <laughs> oh my gosh, Paul, do you know what this means? Clubs for muffers are amazing. No, I was oh. going to say crackle pop tunes are now factory. Oh. Pops and bangs from the factory. <laughs> what up? I think, I mean, I think it sounds good. I actually think it sounds good too. <laughs> now enjoy some sound clips of before and after, which is what you've been waiting this whole time for. Okay, so I've been driving the car with the Club Sport muffler on it for about a week now. Uh, we also did take a long road trip in this car, so we did a lot of highway driving. This resonator or the muffler ha doesn't have a lot of issues like a resonator delete might, where you get a lot of like highway noise. Pretty much the only time you get more noise out of this thing is under load. So if you kind of listen, under load is generally when you're gonna get the most noise coming out of it. At cruising levels, it's pretty quiet and similar to stock. So uh, if you're worried about noise, noise is not really a big issue on this one. All right, so when we look at the mode here, something to keep in mind when you do this custom one, you can see a little more detail. You can adjust the actual noise of the sound actor. So that's what this is right here. So sport's gonna be noisier, eco, and then comfort. These are gonna be your noisiness of that. So it's customizable uh, to the level. So if you hit, for example, engine sound, um, you can adjust that down. So if you're wondering if this is something that you can reverse on your car after you're done, it's pretty easy. As long as you make a clean cut here, you'll be able to swap this back with that same clamp, unbolt this one, swap the other one. Of course, you'll have to swap balances too. Thank you so much for watching. 
If you like this video, make sure you check out our other one where we picked up the car, we installed the short shifter. We also went to Volkswagen's port, which we'll link in the description. And we also have a slew of parts that will be coming for future videos. Bye.